Hello everybody, my name is Aspen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to talk about my July TBR. I feel like if you've been watching booktube for a while, a lot of people know that July is kind of like summerween month. Obviously, the summerween readathon happens every July and it's just something that's really fun to participate in, something to bring some spooky vibes into summer. The first part of this TBR will be going through like the books I plan to read for summerween and then there will be a kind of a second section where we pick a few more random books for the July TBR. For summerween, there are five prompts and the first prompt is just to read a book in the dark. So this is the one prompt that's going to remain a mystery both to you and to me as to what we'll be reading because I'll probably just find something on my Kindle to read one night before bed in order to fulfill that prompt. So I don't have anything in mind right now. So the second prompt is just to read a thriller or horror book and for this one I've decided I want to read Final Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. This is the third book in the like camp slaughter series and it'll be the last one hence final slaughter and i've read the other two books like each year that they've come out and i honestly feel like i've kind of read them around this time or maybe i read them more towards like october-ish but regardless i've really been waiting for this last book i don't know why i thought it was supposed to come out a lot earlier than it did i don't know if it got pushed back or not i don't really pay a lot of attention to that but for some reason i thought it was coming out like around the end of last year and it didn't i think it came out just like a month or two ago but the Camp Slaughter series follows a, a killer, a cannibal killer, as he terrorizes various groups of people in the first two books, and this will be his final story. I'm excited for this one. I think I've given both of the books before this one two stars. Or no, 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 no. Four stars. My brain is not really like with us today. I've given both books four stars and so I'm really excited to read the third one and it'll be another series checked off the list which is awesome. The third prompt is to read a book with a night sky on the cover and I felt like I had the perfect book for this prompt which is Where the Truth Lies by Anna Bailey and this one is just I think kind of a, a standard thriller. It says... When 17-year-old Abigail Blake disappears after a party, the festering secrets and long-standing resentments of the small mountain town of Whistling Ridge, Colorado emerge with devastating consequences. So just kind of a missing person thriller, I guess, but this certainly fits the night sky prompt and I've had this book for quite a while, so it's about time I read it and get it off my physical TBR. The fourth prompt is to read a book with five words in the title. And so for this prompt, I've chosen This Skin Was Once Mine by Eric LaRocca. I hesitate to say this, but I feel like I've finally had my breakthrough with Eric LaRocca. If you've been around for a little while, I have had kind of a, a tumultuous past with this author. The first few books of theirs that I read, I just didn't really like and I didn't really understand, but I finally found a book last fall, You've Lost a Lot of Blood, that I gave four stars and I really thoroughly enjoyed, and I actually just read another one of their books in June that I'll talk about in my June wrap-up that was another winner for me. So I'm feeling more positive going into their books. Um, I'm just, I've always said, like, because they're so beloved, I know there's got to be a reason and I want to understand. I want to be on the, I want to be on the Eric LaRocca train. And so I feel like I just had to push through it and I don't know if I would go back and reread some of the ones that I didn't enjoy if I'd feel differently now. Now that I've accepted, like, what the books are and what I'm going to get out of them, I'm not sure. But I'm happy to say that I feel more positive going into their books and I feel more hopeful that I'm going to enjoy them. And then the last prompt for Summerween was to read a book that takes place in the summer. I was trying to focus more on like my horror TBR for Summerween, but I couldn't really tell from a lot of the books that I own really when they take place. And I also thought maybe I'd want a little bit of a break because I'm planning to mostly read horror and a thriller for the other prompts. So I decided to throw in something a little bit random 
random and a little bit different for this prompt, which is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I haven't read an Abby Jimenez book before, and I've honestly never really felt the desire to, but when this one came out and I started hearing about what the plot of this book was, it's intrigued me. It's the most compelled I've felt to read one of her books. So I picked up a copy. I've decided I'm going to give it a try and maybe I'll love it. And then maybe I'll want to read all of her other books. But something about this one just seems so much more interesting to me. It follows two people who seem to keep having these experiences where they date someone and it, when that relationship ends, that person goes on to like find their forever partner right after them and that's happened to both of them like multiple times and so I think they enter into kind of an agreement of like well if we date each other and then we break up it'll like trick the system and we're gonna find our soulmates after this so I'm excited to get in this one I've heard pretty much only amazing things about it and I just thought maybe I would want a little romance to kind of break up some of the other darker books that I'll be reading. I mean I've heard this one isn't all like sunshine and rainbows and that there's some heavier topics touched upon which is fine but it'll still be just something different from the rest of the TBR. So that is my Summerween TBR as of right now. It could always change. I think last year I had quite a few changes to my Summerween TBR from the time that I made my July TBR to the time that I actually participated participated in Summerween. We'll see how this year goes. I'm very excited. I am planning to vlog it all, so I'm looking forward to that. And then for the second portion of this video, if you saw my June TBR video, I did an emoji spinner wheel that like selected an emoji and I had to find a book that fit that. And I had a lot of fun with that. I thought it was a really like fun way to pick reads and I could kind of curate like the emoji list to books on my shelves but then the the selection was still a bit random and so I've decided to do it again this month. I don't know. I just enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun so we're gonna do it again because I want to because I can. So I've selected another list of emojis to spin on here. I'm thinking maybe I'll pick four books because last month I only put seven on my TBR and I already have, you know, kind of five from Summerween. The nice part about Summerween is that it's concentrated into one week, so you kind of just power through a lot of books in one week and it leaves the rest of the month open. So I think I'll do four on the spinner wheel for the rest of the month to try to fit into my reading. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I have, I guess, 16 emojis on the list of the spinner wheel and we are just going to go ahead and make our first spin. Oh, okay, so this is like an anatomically correct heart. I'm very excited about this one because the book that that emoji correlates to is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. I don't know a lot about this book, but a lot of people that I watch and interact with have read it and really enjoyed it, so I'm really excited to try it out and see how I feel. I think it follows a woman who is a cannibal, but... <laughs> Apparently we have a cannibal theme this month with Final Slaughter too, but this is one I've been really wanting to get to for a while, so I'm very excited about that selection. All right, spin number two. Oh, wait. Oh my god, that was so on the edge. I didn't know which one I was going to pick. So we got a brain two. I don't know why I put two <laughs> organs on this list, um, but I'm gonna have to verify. I had a book in mind for this, but I didn't like reread the premise of the book, so let me verify that it fits. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to find something else. So I will be back once I have figured out what I'm fitting with this prompt. Okay, the book I had in mind will work for this prompt, and that book is Intercepts by TJ Payne. The reason I picked, like, or I had the brain as a correlation for this one is the premise of this book says, the government wanted to unlock hidden abilities in the human mind. They put subjects in extreme sensory deprivation. All the test subjects went violently insane, but the research continued. Today, it has been perfected. Almost perfected. And I don't know what that means, 
but I do know it means that they are messing with the human brain and experimenting on people and I just I'm so curious I've seen I feel like very mixed reviews about this book like sometimes I see it in many lists in a row of like five star best horror books ever and then sometimes I see it in lists of like I hated these books and so I I have no idea where I'm gonna fall in this one it's just a book I've seen around a lot and I've always been very curious about it so I'm excited about this selection as well I feel like I'm like looking forward to July I mean I'm already looking forward to July because I have some things that I'm very excited about in July just personally but also like this reading stack so far is making me very excited for my July reads so let's spin for our third prompt or third book whatever. Okay, so this one is just a blue block. I explained last month that the kind of solid color options that I put on the wheel are more so to give myself the option to have a little bit more freedom with picking a book so I can just associate a color to it. So for the blue, I went for the book A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh. The spine, it's funny to me because the spine is like this really bright, vibrant orange, but the front of the book is very blue. And this is the second book in the I don't know what I can't remember what her name is uh the detective detective morgan series dc morgan series the first book is the last party which I read in february perhaps it doesn't matter I read it earlier this year and I really enjoyed it I had a very positive reading experience it's not a thriller that I'd heard a lot of people talk about but I gave it four stars I think very fondly of it and someone told me that there was another book in the series and I had no idea that was even going to be a thing I immediately bought a copy of it as soon as it came out I just really really enjoyed that first book I enjoyed the detective which is also very rare for me because I don't often love detective POV books but I enjoy I loved this detective I thought she was so fun to follow, so entertaining. Uh, she had a very compelling storyline, so I'm super excited. I don't know anything about the plot of this one. I don't know what the mystery is. I don't know what, like, we're solving, and I don't really want to. I kind of just want to go in blind, so I'm not even going to look, but this is going to be our option for the blue cover. So we are going to do one more spin. I want to do more just because this is fun, but I also need to be realistic that like I need to give myself enough to read, but also like enough for freedom if I don't feel like reading these to read something else a little bit. So we're just going to do one more. Some of those have been landing so on the middle that I don't know which one is going to get picked. Okay, so we got the number five. So for the number five, I had a very specific book in mind for this one. Five Survived by Holly Jackson. This is a YA thriller. I've actually never read a Holly Jackson book before. I have all of her but like I have the whole Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I have her new release. I have this one. I haven't read any of them yet. So I guess Five Survive is going to be our first one. I think this one should be really entertaining and very fast paced. I think it all takes place in one night and with it being YA I'm sure it'll be an easy quick read to get through. So that is going to be our last selection from the emoji wheel. And with that, we have our entire TBR. I feel, like I said, very excited and positive about the potential of this stack of books. So I'm looking forward to getting into these in like a week or so when July is actually here. But yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts on them are, if you think I've got a good selection here, anything you think I might really enjoy. That is going to be the end of today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.